if you're really new and you're setting this up as your first channel, then just use the meta SDK. It's for free. Can save you a couple of troubles because it doesn't introduce a third party. And then just start tracking your most important in-app events. For most of the sub subscription out there, it's really the trial start that they want to be tracking in order to start their first campaigns. For the newbie out there, what events do you really want to get tracked at the meta? Going deeper into the funnel, it's kind of complicated because of like attribution settings, especially in scan, but you can insert a few more tracking points throughout onboarding that might be interesting. If you're a gaming app, maybe some form of levels achieved. So anything that is a good proxy for value and happens early in the funnel. How many relevant signals? Three to five? Or what do you look for? Games often do more. I think subscription apps can kind of survive on one, which is the trial start. But yeah, three to five, I think is a good ballpark. I wouldn't go beyond, especially in your initial setup. Can you measure within meta, like how many of the trial starts end up being just a subscription as well? You won't be able to track it on iOS at least because in the end it happens too deep into the funnel. So on your ads dashboard, you will always only see who started a trial and you need to figure out in your backend, in your product analytics, who is converting. And that's one of the big challenges that was introduced with scan and we don't have user level tracking anymore and can put the UA world together with the product world. So now it's up to you to figure this out. Do you have anything else that you like to track? If you can figure out like some form of qualification event, that's good. For example, if people tend to set up an account and you can look into like who started a trial and set up that account. And if that correlates nicely with conversion, then that's something, for example, you could add on top. I would first try to find these user behaviors that lead to higher conversion from trial to page and then that's something you might want to know on the ad side talk to me about the granularity of the campaign setup as you're starting out make it as consolidated as possible rather have one campaign one ad set if you're at this only 10k budget because the more you split out ad sets the more conversion events you need to receive in order for the algorithm to do a good job what they're recommending is 50 events per ad set per week and if you create two that means you need to drive double as many trials already. So start very, very consolidated and only add additional ad sets once you actually increase budget and you kind of figure it out, hey, my trial is 20 bucks a piece. I'm getting 200 now a week. So I can actually have two ad sets driving 100. And then that would allow you to pull in additional layers where you want to optimize. One thing that is like really, really important in here is that Meta always optimizes for one event and only has visibility on what's happening up until that event. So in the case of a trial start, it's really just a proxy event. You're going to have a trial to paid conversion of 30, 40, 50% of your good, but basically half of the people that you feed to Meta are not kind of going to convert and they don't know which ones. So they only look at who is starting a trial and who does that very cost efficiently. What I often see is that um, advertisers then optimize for a very cheap cost per trial, which often comes from, for example, young audiences because they're cheaper, they don't have high purchasing power, so other brands stay away from them, meaning you're buying a lot of people 18 to 24 at cheap cost per trial, but their trial conversion is going to be bad because they can't pay for a 60, 70 bucks a year product. So these are the kind of things you want to find out in your product and then basically use campaign infrastructure to allow Meta to drive or like allow you to drive the budget in directions that you want it to be. So for example, if you figure out, hey, I have massive differences on age group and I can to 99% <laughs> assure you that you're going to find out if you're asking an onboarding, then that might mean that you want to create two ad sets. One is with static creatives, one is with videos because videos tend to scale on reels where young users are. Statics tend to scale on Facebook feed where older users are. And over time, you will basically figure out these learnings based on your product data and then pull in additional ad sets more and more to basically be able to al allocate budgets in different directions and not just purely trust the algorithm because the algorithm only knows what a cheap trial is and that's not necessarily a good, good user for you. So we got one ad campaign, one ad set, 50 events per week. How many creatives do you generally like to start off with? I usually do three to five per campaign. Don't go crazy. If you have an Advantage Plus campaign, you can put more, but really Meta always puts spend only on the first one or two and the others don't do anything. So if you put in 10 creatives, then you're never going to learn how did the bottom eight perform. Talking about manual campaigns worth versus Advantage Plus, um, it's kind of the two overarching campaign times that you can use. I've recently seen better performance from Advantage Plus as well. I always recommend it to use manual because they allow you to control age more easily. So you can in the ad set just choose, for example, I want to exclude anyone below 
age 25, because that's usually very, very hard to convert age group. While if you want to do that in an Advantage Plus campaign, you have to do it on account level in the app settings, which is just a bit more complicated. I would say kind of choose one campaign type. I tend to use manual in the beginning because I want a little bit more control, but also there, like don't set up both at the same time and again, split out your budgets um, just because in the end, it means you have to spend more. But over time, I would definitely test both and see how these campaign types react because they can end up buying totally different audiences. So then like I would always kind of try to analyze like what's the age groups I'm spending on which each of these, what's my placement distribution, which is very interesting because Meta in the end isn't just kind of one channel, one app. It's Instagram, it's Facebook, they have reels, they have video feed. So um, you can be spending 1K a day in totally different places and the campaigns wouldn't have anything to do with each other. So that's the kind of things you want to figure out over time. Uh, Scan tends to be under tracking. Apple is just really bad at allocating, uh, at, at attributing trials. So I often see around about 40%, if not higher discrepancies in what Scan is reporting and what I end up seeing in my product analytics in terms of like the incremental uplift. So that's definitely something you also want to pay attention to. Yeah, like look at the blended ones, um, switch on meta, and then you want to see that your baseline goes up by X percent and compare that to what you actually see in, in the console because you can't trust the numbers. And Scan just underreports because Apple made it that way. That's not Meta's fault or decision. But even with AEM, I often see that still it's like 10, 20% less trials coming in than I actually see in my product analytics. So in order to assess the actual value you're driving, you need to kind of figure that out. My AEM campaign delivered to which other placements by Scan campaign delivered to. And sometimes they're just going after different people in different places. And then it's up to you to make an educated guess on, should I be on Facebook? because my app is rather for older people or should I be on Instagram and Reels because I have a, I don't know, social network for young people. Oftentimes I would even have kind of one of my ad designs as one of my screenshots. Like if I have a winner, I just bring that in like a background with some text on it and bring that in as a screenshot. And that means you kind of have that one-to-one -one link in what's happening on the ad side, what's happening on the store. So that could be also when then people search for your brand name and another one comes up first, they will still recognize that the second one is you because they're seeing a similar message style creative than what you're doing on the ad side. So that could be a little hack to prevent them clicking on the other search result. <laughs>